Because it was actually sort of really at the helm of this crisis till the summer, uh, Matt Hancock, having essentially worked at the front of government through previous waves. Yeah. How worried are you by Omicron? Well, I think we're right to be uh, cautious and I think we're right to be worried about it. Uh, the, 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 but we're so much better prepared for this new variant than we were for previous new variants. But not that well prepared, the fact that we're having to do this sort of record rate of vaccination in order to ward it off at the cost of the NHS's ability to treat other people. No, no, if you think about how much better prepared we are now compared to in previous, in previous waves, previous new uh, variants, and, of course, the first, you know, when it first sure. struck... We've got the vaccines. But you're not saying there's no cost to the NHS's ability to do its, its day job? Uh, no, but I think that the balance in terms of the effort needed to vaccinate versus the impact of a, of a wider spread is very, very strongly in favour of putting the effort now into vaccination, including because we can use uh, all parts of the NHS, like pharmacists, to get the vaccinations going... And that leaves the pressure, relieves the pressure that would otherwise get into the, the core of the NHS, the hospitals, if this spread any faster. So, the, so we've got the vaccines, but we've also got testing in a much, much bigger scale than we had even this time last year. And sure, but we've got this weirdness that only some of the testing sites can, you know, test for this S gene dropout, which will give us an indication. Um, so actually, the ability of tests to tell us in a timely way, whether it's Omicron or Delta, it's not there yet. Well, we, firstly, we've got the lateral flow tests that, you know, anybody can take. I took one this morning and then I ordered another box of seven. Mm -hmm. They're available free. It's really important that they stay free, the tests. Sure. And then we've got a much bigger sequencing arrangement than we had you know, a takes year time. ago. Yes, but it's far, far better than it was. So a combination of the vaccine, the testing and the new antivirals yeah. means that we're in much better prepared sure. than we were before. But in terms of what sort of directly affects people, it's the restrictions on their lives. Now, yeah. you'll have heard somebody you work very closely with, Jenny Harris. She now yeah. runs the uh, security safety uh, part of, you know, the health service, UKHSA. Yeah. Um, and she said that she would prefer that we all eliminated unnecessary social interaction. She said there was a reasonable chance we'd be asked to work from home again. Is she right? Well, we're not there yet on working But is she home. right to warn about unnecessary social interaction? Well, saying things like we may need to go further on working from home is perfectly reasonable, but I don't think we're there yet. And what I'd Party, say, so, though, yeah, what I'd say on Christmas is we, peop, we should test the hell of it out of ourselves, right? The best way to keep yourself safe if you're seeing people, you know, knowing I was coming to see you, I took a test this morning. We should test the hell out of ourselves, and that is the way, best way, to just be really cautious and careful and just, and, and just get those tests. They're available free uh, and, and take them, and that will help to keep things open. Now, you'll have seen that the advisers that you work very closely with on SAGE, government's advisory body, has been saying they would prefer that people had a test before getting on a plane, they would prefer that people stayed in quarantine until either day five or day eight and another test. Why isn't the government doing that? Well, uh, I think when you have a new variant like this, there's the, all this uncertainty, right, that everybody's been talking about. And I've lived this and s seen, you know, what happens. And the government's got to get the balance on this. And I think they've broadly got the balance right. And I think they move very, very fast. You know, I know how hard it is to move quickly when you see a new variant. From the South Africans publishing all the data, it took them 24 hours to bring in measures. That is, in government terms, incredibly quick. And then it's a balance. And I think they've broadly struck the right balance to be cautious because there is a new variant, but we don't yet know how bad or difficult it'll be. And, you know, we've taken the decision as a country this summer to basically open up and to remove the legal constraints. That seems to have gone pretty well because, as Mark was saying, the number of people in hospital is falling. It's now just over 7,000. It was almost 10,000 a month ago. Yeah. Uh, and that, had, that has been going well. But, but can I so, bring, in, so you can just can I bring Mark in on this? I can't remember if it was you or one of your close colleagues who said in the House of Commons that actually, in many ways, with a vaccine, this looks much more like flu, and we wouldn't force people to wear masks for flu, and we wouldn't force people to isolate uh, for flu. 
I mean, broadly, is, is, is Matt overdoing it, in your view, and the government overdoing it? Well, I think if... Well, look, the, the couple of things that... There was one thing you said earlier about South Africa. So one of the th differences there is actually... it's not. It, yes, they've had more COVID, but they actually are not a very well-vaccinated population. So but they've had lots of... I, uh, but, yes, but, but COVID does confer immunity. Yeah, well, it and, does, and but actually, I, the, the data seems well, indicates that the immunity from having had it lasts longer than the immunity from... Well, no, but I'm, hold on, I'm, Robert. Uh, here, in this country, 98% yes. of people have got antibodies. 98%. Yeah. Now, about 20% about is through having had the disease, the rest through vaccination. Yeah. Well, what, South what, Africa, far, far fewer people have yeah, been Yeah, because vaccinated. we haven't vaccinated them, which is, which is something well, they have. Well, a scandal. Well, no, a, a scandal. Yeah, hold we on there, hold hold on there because too. actually South Africa does have spare vaccine. They have a problem bringing people forward. Um, a bit just, just on the other point, I'm, I'm not sure I completely want to do the testing the hell out of people. I mean, first of all, mm. I would just say the tests, of course, are not free. They might be free when you order them, but they're all, of course, paid for by the taxpayer and at a cost of billions of pounds. So they're not free. Um, and I'm not sure, for example, I want to test the hell out of children. I mean, the Royal College of Paediatrics and Child Health have been very clear that they don't think you should test children unless they have symptoms. And they think there's some very clear harms done to children by te repeatedly testing healthy children uh, when they don't actually have... Uh, any symptoms, and they want us to stop doing it. And I happen to think they know a little bit about child health. So I'm not sure just what, what, testing so what, the hell out of people is a that, Matt? good idea. Yeah, absolutely, because the cost of testing is tiny compared to the economic cost of what you have to do if this gets rife. So keeping things open, oh. it, since, you know, uh, that's a goal that Mark and I share, you know, it, it is much, much easier to do that if people take tests, and then obviously if you're positive, uh, self-isolating. Now, we're going to talk about cost a bit because there's been a lot of controversy about, you know, alleged waste in terms of contracts ordered for procurement. Now, uh, uh, we heard you in the Commons responding to Labour saying that it was, quotes, a load of rubbish that your public and neighbour, Alex Bourne, got an equipment contract from the government. Um, but actually, I've seen the contract and it says in a subclause that Alpha Laboratories would buy all the vials from Bourne's business. Uh, and it's actually on the face of the contract. And I've got to tell you, as a business journalist for donkey's years, it is just inconceivable that the Department of Health was not aware that the subcontract was going to Bourne. It's inconceivable. So how can you say that there is no connection between you and that contract? Because I had absolutely nothing to do with either that contract and, more importantly... But why is it, hold, written, hold, but why is it written into the contract? Why oh, uh, is that business written into the contract? Because it is I've, weird. I've absolutely no idea because I didn't have anything to do with the contract. And, more importantly, the, 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 the gentleman in question and his company didn't get a contract with the department or with the NHS. They were a subcontractor and, therefore, they didn't have a contractual ar arrangement with the department. So... I have Hang on, I've dealt they, with they this. Took, no, but let me, let me no, just, no, but this let is me, really quite well, important. Because... It is, that's why I was answering your question, Robert. Thank you. So, the point is that I have been told through the media and outlets that I, somehow there's been some great scandal here. And it's just not true, right? I had nothing to do with this contract. I had nothing... And, and there isn't a contract between my constituent and the department. He was a subcontractor. But more importantly, at that time, do you remember what it was like? We were doing everything we possibly could to save lives. And all this stuff about contracts, which has all been looked into by the National Audit Office, it is all just... Actually, what happened behind the scenes is people worked incredibly hard to do everything okay. they possibly could uh, look, to I've, save I've lives. Got, I've got, I've got, I've got, hang on, I have got to say one more thing about this contract, because as somebody who's looked at these sorts of things literally for donkey's years, you get an established business like Alpha Laboratories writing in to the face of its contract with the department that it is going to place... Actually, it's tens of millions of pounds of work with a business that has never done vials, you know, in its entire history. It, it is, honestly, it, 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 most people will say it's just an unbelievable coincidence. It, you know, it's weird. Well, you may not have seen a contract like that. Nobody had seen a disease like this. All I can tell you is that... Is but that, you're saying it's a coincidence, basically, that your neighbour ends up... I'm not saying it's a I'm saying I have nothing to do with it. And the accus all these accusations are complete rubbish. People are trying to insinuate that there's a problem where there was no problem. What there was 
with we did a big call out. We said, can you come and help the nation to save lives on PPE, on testing and on ventilators? And people came forward. And as you know, there'll be an inquiry, it will look through all of this as the National Audit Office already has. And do you know what it'll find? It'll find people working hard to save lives. Oh. And that's it. And, and just to be clear, when there is the judge led oh, inquiry, you've got no problem releasing all your emails, all your texts, all your WhatsApp messages. They can have the lot. I've already handed you... them over to the department for them, uh, you know, if, 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 knowing that this is coming down the line. Absolutely. Okay. Burn so let's. Home. So you, you've answered on this particular contract, but your former colleague Lord Bethel actually said on the record that £2.8 billion, it's not a trivial sum of money, of PPE protective equipment was unfit for use in hospitals or care settings. This was £2.8 million of money spent by your department. That in itself is scandalous, isn't it? I, I, did you say million or billion? Billion. £2.8 billion. I haven't... I, I, this, was a, this, was a parliament, this was a statement to Parliament. Well, I, I, I don't recognise that figure. What I can tell you, though, is that I do recognise there was a massive problem getting hold of PPE around the world... And we made sure that we got as much PPE as we could. And loads of people came to help. Labour Party members, members of the public, all sorts of people rallied round in very difficult circumstances. And, you know, Absolutely. it has been gone through. The inquiry will go through it. I know that what I did was worked as hard as I could to oh save lives. God. And that's that. Now, we've got to talk to you about the circumstances of your resignation. Uh, you admitted, uh, as soon as the story about your contact with your aide was uh, published, that you'd breached social distancing rules, but you started off by just apologising. You didn't resign. Why didn't you resign on the spot? These were rules that you'd written. You knew what they were. You knew you'd broken them. Why didn't you quit? Well, as you can imagine, the first thing that I had to... that I focused on was my, was my personal life. And then when I focused on my professional responsibilities... I, I decided that I had to resign, and but that's it took, what I but did. It, but it took 24 hours. It should have taken you about two minutes. Well, you know, I had, uh, I, I had, I'd blown up every part of my life, my, and um, I, uh, I, I, I concentrate on my personal life first, as you can probably imagine. Is w the right. W thing. Were you surprised the prime minister didn't sack you? Well, I'm not going to go into the conversations I had with the prime minister, and you know, well, he didn't I, sack you. It took 24 hours. Well, I, I made the decision. It was clearly the right decision. And I, I'm, I'd just say sorry again for, you know, the failure of... Um, I, I let a lot of people down and sorry to the people who I, who I hurt. Um, I mean, just on this, there is a sort of idea around the place that this is a government which does follow different rules from the rest of us. Is that something that you recognise and want to apologise for? No, I... I actually totally disagree with that because I resigned and took responsibility for my actions. Um, now, you're out in public again, you're here, we've seen you a lot in Parliament. Are you hoping to get back into government soon? Well, I'm not in any hurry. I, I actually think that being on the back benches is, is both... I'm enjoying it, but also it's a very important job. And I think contributions from people who are, who've been there in the heat of battle, you know, whether Mark is chief whip or... Uh, uh, Theresa May, the contribution she makes as a former Prime Minister, and if I can make that sort of contribution in the, in the House of Commons, then... Uh, well, she won back of the year. Maybe you can aspire to that title over the next uh, year. I think, Jess, um, I can tell from your face that there's <laughs> something you want to say. Oh, I mean, what an absolute load of rubbish. Did anybody else's friends get a contract? Mine didn't. None of my friends are on those lists. And uh, the reality is, is, oh, you know, you don't re f remember what it was like. Well, I do remember exactly what it was like. And there are PPE providers in my constituency that had lorries driving in from Italy to take it when I was trying to get yeah. through on those lines that were given uh, to, to members of parliament. And so I watched lorries take personal protective uh, equipment out of my constituency while my care homes were ringing me and asking if I could go to the local yeah. school to borrow goggles. And all the while, oh, we don't know what it was like. Well, I remember also... So filling in endless contracts for charities for victims of domestic abuse where I've got all the notes of how I helped them and every single bit of rigour that they had to go through to get any public money that somehow Randox doesn't have to qualify th by the same rules. Oh, I remember what it was like in the heat of battle. Yeah, so and... the, the fact that it was hard to get PPE is absolutely right because the whole world was trying to get it. And actually, on the, those who got the contracts... You know, but there we were, were trying... there were donors to the Labour Party who who got uh, we those were trying too. It to was... get that stuff. The owner of that yeah. company in my constituency was trying to get it into the government. 
I had endless phone calls. We were having those phone calls with the Cabinet Office. It's funny because they were already a provider. However, some people's friends who weren't providers somehow managed to get through the line. OK, uh, we've had an important conversation. Unfortunately, I have been told we've got to go to a break.